Well, nothing trashy about old Orange Crush and Big Red. Let's cover a wing. Okay. Again, I'll post a link uh, in the forum site, uh, website for the uh, tips and hints. And in it, I give a lot more diagrams and, and pictures and stuff like that too. But so essentially the wing is all done. You know, I've gone through and checked everything on it, make sure every nut, bolt, rivet, everything is done correctly. I went back through and I'll show you uh, how that in, in the uh, uh, forum post, it'll show you how to measure to, to put the uh, tapes on here to where we're gonna start the fabric. The video is pretty good that Cub Crafters have, but let me tell you, I was at Cub Crafters and uh, actually covered a wing with them uh, when I did my first airplane. And uh, what's changed is the location of starting the tapes. Uh, they've changed them. If you remember in the video, if you look at it, there's a patch. If you put the, the fabric on like they did in the video where it wraps around, it'll come back here to the tip bow and it'll be short and you have to put a patch on here. So instead they move the fabric this, in this direction and it gives it enough fabric. Now it will come over and cover this so you don't have to do the patch and it's all one single piece here, much nicer. So do it the way I'm doing it here and the way I'm telling you is the way that the factory is doing it, okay? And essentially what that is, is you're coming down on your wing on your second row of rivets right here. This is the leading edge skin. You got two rivets, come to the second rivet. Uh, mark you a spot three quarters of an inch on either side of it. So you've got an inch and a half right here and uh then you're going to scuff this area because that's where we're going to glue the fabric the top fabric is going to start here and go over first and then we'll come back and we'll start the bottom fabric here and it will wrap over and go on the bottom bottom of that way your wind is coming up and going over this way so the top bottom skin is going over the top of the top skin and we'll go here so anyway, we'll scuff after we've marked our areas, just scuff down through here with a Brillo pad, with a, a red Scotch-Brite. I then just take off, you can use a string line if you want, but I got tired of the mess the chalk makes from snapping the chalk. So I just started marking it and using a long uh, straight edge. I've got a three foot steel uh, tape measure and I just take a pencil and mark on it. And that way you don't have to worry about it. You just go, that chalk gets all in the uh, glue and everything It's a mess. Okay, so we've gone through like we talked about and uh, everywhere with the green tape, any sharp edge or joint that you might uh, have something sharp on that you want to cover or a transition area, we put that t those tapes on there, taped all the joints of the skins where they overlap. I make it so that I cover in the rivet and the joint at the same time just to give a cover right there. Like I say in the uh, forum post, you remember this is going to be under the fabric okay so we're going to be covering these with fabric and later with tapes that are going to come over I and mean, you're going to see these rivets along with all the rivets that we put in here for the fabric uh, rivets to hold them down instead of rib stitching if you're doing that so what i do like to do is take a drill bit and what i do is go over each one of these and i make sure there's no bubble or there's any wrinkles or anything in these i make these rivet heads perfect that way when we come back over them later we can seal it good if you don't do that and it, it is so humid here today that the tape doesn't even want to stick it's so bad it is really humid the poly tack is just turning white when you put it down but in any case we've got the green tape we'll go over any edge all the edge it doesn't hurt you won't see this tape so i go over here this is where the intermediate rib comes over i just make sure that edge is covered make sure there's nothing sharp anywhere that's going to go through the fabric same thing here i go over being sure that you're not covering any of your rivet holes for your fabric later on the top and and the bottom but this is where the you know the rivet and the joint is right here so i just go over to the straight part there and just put a piece let it come across this joint right here and let it come across this rivet all in one piece there just make sure you don't have any sharp edges anywhere around here and go all the way down, we're gonna mark off an area. We're gonna pre-glue about a, an inch here around the light assembly. And we're also gonna pre-glue, I have already done that and pulled it off. You can probably see where I've done it, but with on this edge here, right before it drops down into the fuel tank bay, 
you're gonna we're gonna glue it to this edge so i put a piece of tape on this side and ran it all the way down here and then just about an inch or so over i just ran it it doesn't matter it just didn't have to be exact but an inch or so over run it across here put you a little good heavy coat of poly tack down and then just immediately pull the tapes back up and throw them away so we're going to do that around here we'll do it across this cap strip on the number three double rib and we'll do the same thing over on the back side where the flat false false spar is same thing starting at the high part here and going about an inch or so i just ran it to the edge of the high part here so you had a glue line you'll probably you will, you will see this glue through the fabric on the finished product so make it nice and straight that's why we're using tape make it look nice because you'll see that line it'll be a, a little different look to it with the poly tack poly brush poly spray and paint on top of it in fact it's kind of it kind of wants to do the same thing with all this metal areas your poly brush that you spray and everything will go down and kind of hit here and that's why you have to to brush it in with the foam like i talked about in the uh, other videos see how white and milky that poly tack that's really strange you know it's it's just from the humidity i guess that made it turn so white looking so coming around the back side we did the same thing all the edges that was the edge of the uh, to the cap strip to the flat false bar rivets this edge here i talk in the in the form about drilling these holes you do not in the ex2 you had you had a smaller flap false bar and you had to drill some holes back here for fabric rivets because you were coming through here you do not have to drill holes through these tail ribs and put fabric rivets in it because essentially this entire metal area is an area that will hold and stick to the poly brush and will stick to so cub crafter says we do not need to drill out any of these for fabric rivets except on the edge so on the edge we're drilling these through just using a match drilling from the bottom of the tail ribs up and this is one that i add here that is not in the tail rib here for some reason you can see they are on all of these but on these flat false spar they didn't put them in i go ahead and add one right there anyway just so it matches these all the way down through and what's strange is that on this machined rib the hanger here that they want you to put that one over the cap, center of the cap. And I guess the reason is because they wanted a Cherry Max uh, rivet was going into here through the machined rib, which is, you know, a little thicker there. So we're going to put the fabric rivet through the center. So when you get it all done, it's not going to line up with the rest of them. The rest of them are all going to come across here. And then all of a sudden you're going to come back up and have one here. But that's the way it is. And then I came back and I put this one here. So we just got the one that's going to be out of place. You might notice it, probably not. Uh, so anyway, those are the rivets that we're doing there. Same here, thing here, all the edges. One thing here, I even had somebody the other day email me and was talking about how their finished product, how they were starting to see some cracking of the paint right along this edge where their, the tail of their tail rib was kind of poking up. You have to be careful with these. I go back through on all these joints after I put all my ribs in, I go back on the edges and I make sure they're all nice and flat and straight. I mean, as you can see how flimsy they are, just bend them around until you get a nice flat surface. Make sure nothing's sticking up and nothing's sharp. No corners. But it is, just take a pair of pliers and bend it over. You know, it doesn't matter. Just you don't want anything sharp that might poke through your fabric. You'll also come back over here and you'll go down through your joint on your aileron. You'll know, fault spar there with tape. And we talk about that a lot more in the forum post also. We're gonna take the rib lacing, as you can see here, it has diagrams in the manual, which will show you how basically you're just starting. This is just something to temporarily hold these ribs in place while you're putting the fabric in, ironing it out and shrinking it. Once you put the rivet rivets in for the fabric, then those are useless anymore. It's just a temporary brace to hold while you do this. So you start it up here on the top you go down wrap it under and go up so so forth back and forth until you get down to the eighth and ninth bay where you've got all this stuff going on so what you're doing there is you're not going there and coming up and across you're actually going that one's coming down to the bottom then it's going straight across and then it continues its pattern same thing with top when it comes up goes straight across and continues its up and down pattern so you get to the edge on the edge you're just coming around doing the same thing 
you're coming up here, then you're coming across, you should be wrapping to the outside of the tip bow and back over. You will slightly see that when you're finished, but I guess that's just the way it is. So that's all your rib lacings in effect. After I get my foot rib lacing in, I kind of do, as I go, I kind of pay attention. And you don't, you're not really stretching this tight or whatever, you're just kind of getting it taut. You see, it's it's not not playing a banjo with it, but it's, it's tight enough to hold it in place. Then I just look and line it up. I line up the ribs, you go back and then you can hold the tape and you can slide this rib back and forth. When you let go of it, it'll pretty much hold it. So just line up everything so it looks all nice and pretty and straight, okay? Even after you're done and you're getting ready to start putting your uh, burning holes through your reinforcement tapes to go through the fabric and the tapes to put your rivets in, you can still take those ribs and push it even through the fabric. You can take your hand and you can push the rib back and forth. So you don't really want these locked in. It's kind of like the nose skins where you really don't want to lock these in on the three. You want to be able to move them around a little bit to make sure we're matching the holes. So, um, so move them around before you get ready to do it. Just I don't care about the bottom right now. I'm going to do a top fabric first. So I'm just looking at the top, making sure that everything on the top's good. You can see here how we've come across here. I just taped. And don't get crazy taping these things up because it's kind of a pain. You're going to be working with this through a little inspection cover hole uh, in the bottom of the wing later. So just make it where you can access it easily. Turn the ends of your tape over so you can grab them and peel that off while you're reaching your hands up through a little hole. So don't get crazy with it, but just get it over that way there and uh like i say same thing here we're i don't know, i haven't done it yet but i'm going to pre-glue around here i've got it taped off for my one inch pre-glue and i'll pull the green tapes off okay so um so what we've done is i went ahead and i marked marked then my inch and a half here three quarters this way three quarters this way i marked a pencil line down through there pulled tape all the way down there and what i'm going to do is we'll get ready to put this top fabric on what i'll basically do is i'm just going to lay the fabric out just like they do in the video i'll roughly lining up along this bottom edge right here that's where the top one is going to go so it's going to start here and we're going to go that way with it and then after that one's done then we'll come back and we'll start the bottom uh, piece of fabric will come up to this joint We'll, we'll glue it and then come down this way. So these tapes, uh, I try not to push a whole lot on them. I want to get the edge. All I'm doing, trying to do is make a neat, neat line. So I, I put them down. I kind of try to leave the back side where it's not too hard to get off because this one's kind of going to be a pain because as we're going this way across the front, we're going to lay the fabric down. We're going to glue so much of it. And then we're going to have to pull this tape up so far immediately really quick out of the way and then we're going to lay the fabric down over over it so then you're going to have to come back get that all then line this edge up real good and then we'll go to the next section put a little bit more glue down for a couple of feet reach back up there now the fabric is going to be down here so we're going to reach up under the fabric grab that tape and keep pulling it out of the way so it's kind of a pain getting this tape out of the way on the back side but you know it works okay but don't don't go crazy with you know trying to get this tape to stick real hard just kind of get this edge on here and let the less rest be a little easier to pull up and uh can't think of anything else at this stage i'll come back when i get to something else uh kind of important you can see down here at the end how we've got the ground wires are installed here we've got the excess this is the right wing of course so we've got the a lot more your the end of your cable on the right wing is long I will eventually put take this this is uh this cable will eventually come across through over the top of the fuselage and go over into the left wing and connect over in the fuel bay of the left wing with some shackles and connect the cables there so anyway just tape these up out of the way and uh of course everything was blown out very 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 well i take a leaf blower first and just blow it because it's got a wider pattern i blow it and blow it and blow it and then i come back you know, with a little uh, fine tip blower like this with a compressor air in it. And that's so much more powerful than I blow every inch in nook and cranny. I'm gonna tell you, you don't want one piece of metal shaving in here because 
if one piece of metal shavings, I mean a little bitty piece, gets down here on this metal and gets in there in between that fabric, that little bitty piece of metal will come all the way through the paint and stick out. It, it, and the only way you can get it is to cut it out and then you almost have to patch the fabric if you do that because that fabric's so tough. So really be sure you don't have any metal anywhere. Go over it and over it several times and get that really good. So I'll come back later and uh, go over the next stage of it. Probably when we get back and do the aileron, the uh, false spar for the aileron, that's kind of a tricky spot.